Hello out there in the YouTubeverse, it's Max, and I am back at you once again with some standard play. We're living in a post-Field uh, of the Dead world now, so we have to play post-Field of the Dead decks. Not that I was playing Field of the Dead, but I have a deck for you that you may want to try. Maybe. It's pretty sweet. I've been playing it for a little while. It's not bad. It needs some tweaking, and that is something I'm very interested in trying to do. And part of the reason I wanted to bring it here, because I want to hear what you all have to say about this particular deck. This is Rakdos Aristocrats. Now, what we're trying to do is fairly robust. We either want to try to get this Cauldron Familiar on point here. We want to try to get that going, get the little cat going. Do you notice the cat in this has two different colored eyes? It's weird. It's very weird. Um, we want to try to get that going in conjunction, 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 that's not a word, with Witch's Oven. So if we sacrifice the familiar, we make a food. We then sack the food to recur the familiar. I'm opening seltzer water, excuse me. Um, so we can keep going back and forth on the familiar witch's oven to keep getting the triggers of lose one, gain one, which doesn't seem that much, but if we can get multiple ovens in play, we can actually get things churning fairly well. Other one drops are gutter bones, pretty stock standard. We can sack him, we can bring him back, he can die, he can come back, blah, blah, blah. Claim the firstborn, which is pretty neat in this deck, to steal a creature. Um, particularly fun to steal a hydroid crisis with this bad boy and sack it to a witch's oven, something along those lines. On the two, we have Orzov Enforcer, Priest of the Forgotten Gods, which fits very much in with the sacking deal. A Mask of Immolation, which is okay, that's why it's a one oven here. And Angress Rampages, which is one of our big disruption spells of choice, helps us fight Planeswalkers in a big bad way. On the three drop, we have Midnight Reaper, which is excellent in this deck. As you can see with the Cauldron Familiar, not only are we losing one, gaining one, we're going to lose one, really. So opponent loses one in the grand scheme of things, but we draw a card, which is a way better deal than gaining one life most of the time. We have a Singleton Murderous Rider. I'm kind of lukewarm on this card. It's a little expensive in this deck, but again... Planeswalkers are a really big problem for this deck because it's not outright balls to the walls aggro, so it can't just clean up an unprotected Planeswalker a lot of the time. So I do think the Rider may be a necessary evil. It's one of the things I'm looking at. Ayara, first of Lockthwain, really intriguing card. It's a legend, so it's hard to run a lot of in this deck because dead draws feel awful in this deck, like really awful. We'll probably find out when we get to gameplay. But she's quite good, she's quite robust, and if she gets out on the board and can untap, uh, she gets pretty crazy. One of the key cards in this deck is Mayhem Devil. It is a very powerful card. It is a 3-3-4-3 three, three, three. that is a devil, as the name would indicate to you. Whenever a player sacrifices a permanent, Mayhem Devil deals one damage to any target. That's really, really important um, for a couple reasons. Um, and I'll skip over to the lands now. Fabled Passage is in this deck. If you sacrifice Fabled Passage, Mayhem Devil can deal a damage. If your opponent sacrifices a Fabled Passage, Mayhem Devil deals one damage. If your opponent sacrifices something to Angrass Rampage, Mayhem Devil deals one damage. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of synergies in this particular deck. Cavalier of Night, when you use its sack ability, triggers Mayhem Devil. There is a lot going on here. Chandra, Accolade of Flame. At the end of turn, if you use her second zero to make the two red elemental tokens, you sacrifice them at the beginning of the end step. Again, that's two triggers off the Mayhem Devils. Very, very good stuff. Uh, we also have Light Up the Stage and Bedevil to kind of round things out. Bedevil's a little bit of a catch-all. This card I'm pretty lukewarm on, like I was talking about the Rider. They're just really clunky at three mana it's really expensive um i would consider putting in possibly the i forget the name of it um it's the removal spell from war of the spark that lets you sacrifice a creature as part of the cost to reduce its cost or it costs five i'd almost consider trying that out over bedevil because that card also hits a planeswalker it's a one drop most of the time sorcery and it takes a a second resource on our behalf, but our deck's kind of set up for that. It works really well with Claim the Firstborn for two mana. It's steal a creature, kill a planeswalker. 
that's not bad. That's a two-for-two two trade that's high enough in quality that generally will take it. So that's kind of what we're trying to set up here and obviously light up the stage. Just a very good card to help put us ahead and gas us away. It's it's a two of. I think it could possibly go up to a three of. I feel like the deck's curve could get lowered. Like we could drop maybe Ayara, Murderous Rider, Cavalier, Bedevil. Maybe pump up the gutter bones a little bit, pump up the light up the stage, and try to do an aggro deck impression a lot of the time. But I've been playing with this deck for a little while now. And I'm kind of trying to get my hang, you know, the hang of it, my hands wrapped around it, try to figure out exactly what it's up to. So I just want to run through a couple standard games, gives you guys some uh, some food for thought here, and see what you all think. So please leave me some comments, make some, some suggestions if you're playing this. What do you think's good? What do you think's clunky? We're going to help try to discover that as we play through these games. But if you're already played, you have your reps down with this deck... Let me know what you think because I'm, I'm definitely intrigued to see what could be better and what could be changed because I'm always trying to, you know, get better like all of us, right? We're always trying to get better and that's what we're trying to do here together. So we have Susuri. Susuri. So this hand's a little clunky. It's got the Orzhov Enforcer and the Witch's Oven, which is okay. If they're playing an aggro deck, the Enforcer's not bad. Priest isn't bad, but then we're kind of like playing a spell, playing a spell. I think we get blown out a little too easy with this hand. If there were a Cauldron Familiar here instead of Claim the Firstborn, I'd probably Snap Keep this. But I don't know as though this hand has enough going on. We can't trigger Priest of the Forgotten Gods very easily with it. So I just don't think there's enough of a, a game plan going forward to keep this hand. It has lands and spells, but I don't think that's quite enough here. Now, this is a very similar hand, much worse on the mana. Our deck's way heavier black than it is red. So this looks pretty ghastly, but I definitely don't want to go to five if I can help it. And this hand will cast all the spells even when we get to put a mountain on the bottom of our deck. So I do think we have to keep this. We're on the draw, so that'll help smooth this out a little bit. And likely we'll get down a Witch's Oven here. So Dismal Backwater could mean some type of... Uh, I mean, I guess it's a control deck because we're post... Uh, it could still be a Golos deck. I don't know. It could be a... Uh, who knows? The other problem with Castle Lockthwain being super awkward is it's going to likely come into play tapped here. So I think we do have to just play it tapped and pass the turn. A little unfortunate, but it sets us up for Reaper on the next turn just to be mana efficient. So our opponent is most likely uh, Grixis Control. Grixis. Yeah, Grixis. I don't know. Why did... I'm an... Bob! Ah! Most likely Grixis Control. That being said, I do think we want to still try to cast the Reaper. It'll probably get countered or killed. But we can sack it to Witch's Oven if they try to kill it now that it's actually landed, which is a bit surprising. Um, and then we can double Priest of the Forgotten Gods on the next turn and see what we can do. So there's the Murderous Rider. What's nice here is we're going to make that spell fizzle, so it's going to go directly to the graveyard. And we're still going to draw a card, so that's a pretty good exchange for us, actually. Like, three mana for three mana, resource for resource, I think we got we got out on the better end of that one. And we kind of need that, because we need to catch up to our opponent, who's now going to heavily go ahead on cards by uh, drawing from Dreamzing. But I still think our plan next turn is going to be Double Priest of the Forgotten Gods, especially in the face of taking a turn off for a Sorcery. There's no reason to Angrass Rampage here. We'll wait till they get a creature down. The Mayhem Devil is good, but it's a lot easier for this, for decks of this ilk to remove one creature instead of two. I'm going to save the Fabled Passage and just cast both of my Priests. No reason to cast a Lockthwain here. We have too many cards in hand to make that good. We also don't have enough Black Sources to make that work without using the Fabled Passage, which I think is really egregious waste of the card, especially with the Mayhem Devil in our hand. So we'll see. I'm expecting like some kind of Nicole Bolas... Um, some kind of heavy hitter. We'll see. It could be anything. We'll see if there's a Command the Dread Horde in our future. Who knows? They're going to enter some God Eternals. So, we're going to know when surprise, we're going to use the Witch's Oven and sack the target. They're going to mill us for a bunch. They're going to create an army, which is going to be a bit problematic. Okay, claiming the Firstborn here is quite good. So I think we're going to go ahead and play the Mayhem Devil. Um, oh man, I let Auto-Tap do that. Okay. <laughs> Important point of note, don't let Auto-Tap do these things. It's not a huge deal. It's kind of going forward problematic. 
but we do need to fetch up a red source here and as i said our deck is much more black weighted so my primary concern is more to the end that we're gonna have bad mana going forward i'm just gonna attack for five here and sack the army to the oven no point in uh, using the priest here and hopefully that uh that's something i mean at this point they have to have I mean, their deck is literally removal dot deck. Usually, the tap out style Grixis decks are. Yeah, like here they're going to use Chandra and just minus to wipe our board. Understandable maneuver. We have Castle Lockthwain to help dig us out of this mess, but it's a mess. <laughs> like it's full stop. It's a mess. Um, so let's think about this for a minute. So, but as to not have Auto Tap wreck us again, um, we can't Castle Lockthwain if we use Angress Rampage. However, we got to get Chandra off the battlefield. So, there's just no choice here. We kind of have to go for it and hope that the follow-up isn't something like Nicole Bolas. Even if it is, we're not going to beat Chandra any way you spin it. So, we'll crack a couple foods end of turn. Um, we'll get a Black Source for sure at the Fabled Passage. There's no point holding it up looking for a Mayhem Devil. We'll try to get there if we can, but I'm not going to just leave this here untapped when we need to start activating this castle pretty pretty desperately. There's the aforementioned Nicole Bolas. We have no resources, so this is a huge deal for the opponent. They get to draw a card and have us exile. Um, trying to, I just want to see what the card does, please. Uh, each opponent who doesn't control a legendary creature loses. So they're going to set up to try to win via ultimate exile. Card. Oh, yeah, we can get rid of a food, no problem. We have infinite food here, so that's no problem. So we'll sacrifice a food, because we're not going to lose to damage, strictly speaking. So I'm not super worried about having a high life total. We're going to lose to a Nicole Bolas ultimate, so we need to find an answer to Nicole Bolas. But we're going to be activating Castle Lockthwain a lot, presumably. And that can, you know what I mean, lose us a game. So I'm going to play the Swamp. I'm going to activate Castle Lockthwain. And I'm going to see if we can draw a card. Okay, th not that's bad. <laughs> Alright, <clears throat> we got a few turns to try to find an answer. I mean, meanwhile, opponent's going to commit Planeswalkers to the board for sure. So we need a Murderous Rider, we need another Angress Rampage, we need some way to answer this Bolus, and that only keeps us treading water. So we really need an engine card too, something like... Um, Something like, a, I mean, the uh, Cauldron Familiar is good, but it's not going to win us any awards at this stage of the game. Opponents just so far up on cards over us that I just feel like they're going to counter basically everything we do here. But this leaves us with enough mana to activate Castle Lockplay. I mean, I'm sure they have a removal spell in their hand, and they're just like, well, whatever, I can Castle Vantress. They didn't even Castle Vantress. So that shows you how comfortable they are with the cards in their hand. <laughs> when your opponent has up a Castle of Antris and doesn't use it, that is bad news. So we'll see. Opponent's definitely going to Narset here. Looks like they're itching to get rid of the Midnight Reaper. This will help a little bit. We're going to draw a card. They activated the Bolus before, I guess, hoping to trap a card in our hand, which seems a little strange. We lost two of our Planeswalker kill cards, by the way. Um, so a little strange sequencing-wise. I don't know if they're... I mean, I guess if we had a bad card, we had a bad card. Okay, there were Fires of Invention deck. That makes sense. But we'll try to find something. I mean, there's no point in not, right? Oh, right, Narset. There is a point. Wait, did we draw a card that turn? Right, the Midnight Reaper, of course. So we'll play a, uh, I mean, this is what we're talking about where red sources are really bad, right? Like, that that single mountain comes back to haunt us because we could have activated Castle Lockthwain. So we'll see. I'm sure we're way, way out of it. And if we can't draw something in the next draw step, I'll probably just scoop them up because we're about to lose to a bonus ultimate oh, anyway. So as entertaining as that would be, I'm sure, for all of you, I'm going to just go ahead and forego that, that horrible fate. So they played a Fires so far. They're going to play Liliana. So you can see this is very much like a superheroes kind of deck, very tap outy. So pretty neat. I think this is a cool, a cool deck that couldn't have existed 
before uh, before the banning of Wake of Wake of Field of the Dead. Oh, Wake of the Dead. Not correct. Field of the Dead. Okay. Each player sacrifices two creatures. That seems a little aggressive, but that's fine. <clears throat> I drew the cauldron familiar. That's not quite going to be enough here. But we'll still try. Oh, yes. We don't want to do that. Because of... Narset. So we're basically locked out of this one. Happens. That's what happens when you're playing... It. Control's tough for this deck. I think it's a tougher matchup than like a mid rangey kind of build. And that was what was nice about this deck, is it really kind of preyed on the Golos deck a fair decent amount. Uh, same with the Simic Food deck, it's kind of like, kill your Oko, and now you're like one, maybe one creature a turn if you're lucky, and this deck can kind of prey on that pretty good. But, it happens, we'll see. Okay, opponent's gonna go first, again, I'm never lucky with that. Um, we can lead off with pay two life, play a Gutter Bones, set up for Witch's Oven. I think that's fine. It's not great, but the Gutter Bones lets us go to light up the stage on two mana, so I think it's worth doing. So this is a much more aggressive side of the deck than we had the last game, which would have been way better basing off what our opponent ended up doing. I wonder what our opponent's up to. The opponent looks like they're on pretty much the same thing. Which means, sadly, that our Gutter Bones is going to be able to be blocked. But the nice thing is we can kind of force them to block, if we wish. If they block and don't sack to the oven, they don't get their loop. So that's problematic. They kind of have to sack to the oven. Putting it back here is a little dangerous. If I had a removal spell, it may, depending on the texture of their hand, it may have stopped them from being able to continue that loop. So, little risky on the opponent's part, immediately putting the Cauldron Familiar back into play while I have untapped mana. But, it, I mean, it didn't hurt them here. But that is a risky play. They got the Midnight Reaper, so it's going to help them unmulligan for sure. So, I think we do have our, uh, our Mayhem Devil. But I think, I mean, so, like, options include, we could play the Mayhem Devil, um, kind of wait around for things to happen. I think we need to claim this Midnight Reaper, I do believe. So I'm going to use the black mana here to tap for the oven. I just don't want this opponent to unmulligan. The way we can beat them is by going up on, like, keeping up on cards over them. So they have the option to Witch's Oven here if they wish. That's fine. That gets the Midnight Reaper off the battlefield, which is kind of what we're going for. I just don't want this opponent to take over with the Cauldron Familiar plus the... Alright, we're going to light up this. Plus the, um, the Cauldron Familiar plus the Midnight Reaper. It's just crazy too much value. Uh, can't attack here because they can just block with the Cauldron Familiar and use it. So this denies them a usage of the Cauldron Familiar, which is kind of nice. If you look, the life totals are, are definitely problematic. So we have to be careful here. What I'm hoping for is maybe we can catch... Like, we're not going to really be able to catch them with the Angrass Rampage because of it being a sorcery. Unfortunately, they're going to always have an extra artifact to sack with the food. They can't really attack into our 1-2 Priest. So there's not much doing here. Alright, so we want to try to eke out as much value as we can out of our other cards here. Because we don't want to lose them. The problem is, we do also really don't want to have this thing get... You know, we don't want the Ministrant to be sacked. Um, we don't really have a good play for this particular card, the Angress Rampage. So, we can play the Orzhov Enforcer here. And So, hear me out here. This is the one way we can kind of make this work. 
We can priest. And try to set up something with Angress around page. It's fine. This is again as a sorcery. Okay, so they didn't they weren't playing. So we can't attack here, obviously. Our our eligible creatures tapped when we only have a summoning six spirit to deal with. I'm just trying to think of how exactly I want to proceed. Um I don't want to lose value off the Angress Rampage if I can help it, but it does so little in the way of stopping them that it feels kind of bad but all I can play elsewise is a witch's oven or get back a gutter bone so those are pretty anemic plays as well so I'm just going to have to target them to sacrifice an artifact I think and try to stop infinite food from being able to have them loop at least minimally this gets rid of food for no value <laughs> so the next turn we can set up something like mayhem devil Plus oven, perhaps. We could have also... The advantage of getting gutter bones back there is we could have played gutter bones and then had it a target for the priest with the mayhem devil out. Started pinging down spirit tokens. That kind of thing. So we do have to watch kind of how we proceed. But I think we're in okay shape. We're not in awful shape. But the opponent's definitely up on us a little bit here in terms of what they can do. But they're kind of losing value a bit here. They can't activate their Castle Arden Veil, which is kind of good for us. They can't just creature us out. So right now our draws are lining up kind of poorly. Um, I think this is the block. I think we need to stave off damage because of the Cauldron Familiar. We don't have any ways to gain life back yet. And I think we need to be conscious of that. Okay, now we're talking. Um, I'm debating on what order you want to... This deck has a lot of decisions to make because order matters so much. Because I didn't want to play the devil and then play the familiar with the, with that on the stack. Ooh, this is a, uh, a ballsy maneuver here. I want to just shove with the priest because nothing punishes me for that. And knocking the opponent down on life even one is fairly relevant here. So, um, yeah, I think we end the turn. Now we have two two mana we can or two sacrifice effects we can play with. And you gotta remember too that sacking to the witch's oven is part of the cost. Now what the opponent doesn't realize is it's whenever a player sacrifices a creature. So there is a huge cost here to this. They can't just... It's not a free roll anymore for them to familiar until they kill my Mayhem Devil. And that probably is priority number one for them. I'm also going to sacrifice my Cauldron Familiar. And shoot this Midnight Reaper, because again, I want to minimize the damage this Midnight Reaper can do. So as you can see, Mayhem Devil really is crazy good in this particular instance. I mean, I'm just getting so much value out of this. So we'll see what opponent's follow-up is here. Oh, they scooped him up. That seems a slight bit preemptive, but maybe they know that they don't have a way to deal with the Mayhem Devil. That's interesting. Okay. So one and one so far. Let's see what we can uh, what we can pull out of the next one. Right back into the fray. But yeah, so the deck's really interesting. As you can see, it lines up a lot better in the... I mean, there are draws that are good against control. Like, I don't want you to think that this is straight up a dog against control. It just requires 
your lower end cards and it requires a good part of the engine. I mean, you always are kind of trying to aim for the engine if you can help it. You always would prefer having that cauldron plus, uh, cauldron familiar plus witch's oven if you can deal. Like, this is a tough hand to evaluate, right? Like, on the first turn, we do black source with our fabled passage. Then we play red source. We have multiple two drops. We're on the play, so it makes it a little tough. But, I, I mean, like, the problem is we don't really have a lot we can do if we stall on lands, right? Like, we can buy time. I just don't know if that's enough. This hand is very similar in problem. Without some way to, to take advantage of claim the firstborn, I think we drop the claim the firstborn. The problem is we're really not taking advantage of the light up the stage in this hand at all. It's really kind of a bad hand. I think I'm going to mulligan and go to five here. Um, I think I can pull a workable five out of this. We'll definitely drop claim the firstborn. And the question is, do we want to get rid of Rampage or Rider? I think the answer is Rider, because we already have a three drop we're happy to be playing. And I think we do set it up that way. Now, going to five is bad. I know this. But I think that five is better than our six was previously. No reason to make this untap because Rampage is a sorcery. Okay. Guardian's pretty good, so here we'll just have them sack a creature. Don't mind doing this to them because if this is their only Grow Chamber Guardian, this stops them from getting ridiculous value. Because that card can just... They can find buddies, right? Like, it's very good. It looks like we're playing against Gruul here. Obviously, we played two colors in Gruul. I'm a genius. I haven't seen a Dom in a minute. Hmm. I don't think fighting Domri does much. Like, we put him on three, he still lives through his minus two. Problem is, we're really stuck on land. Like, if we had drawn land here, we would be able to play our Mayhem Devil, at least, or a Midnight Rider, Reaper. Midnight Rider. I don't make up names, apparently, for stuff. But we would have been able to get ahead that way. But for now, our opponents, unfortunately, looks like they're going to be, uh... Oh, God. Yeah, I don't know if we're going to be able to take care of Nyssa. This is going to be a tough a tough one for us to overcome here, for sure. Yeah, being able to follow up with that, yeah, that was gross. <laughs> Meanwhile, we commit tapped land to the field. Um, okay. So let's think. Huh. So... The problem is the the forest does the forest plus the blocker threatens one of the planeswalkers, but not the one we're most concerned with. The growth chamber guardian really is problematic for us because it can block um, the forest if we were to send in forest plus um, cauldron familiar. And Nissa at one is kind of fine. Like you don't, I mean the, the emblem is great. Don't get me wrong, but it's kind of fine. So, I think we have to just claim this Growth Chamber Guardian. And the problem is, putting Domri to one doesn't do much either. So, I really don't think there's much we can do here. I think we just kind of got to hold the fort for the minute and just pass the turn. I don't know if we're going to be able to win from here. We're put pretty far behind the eight ball, both in terms of card quality and card quantity. So, we're in trouble, to be sure. The Great Hen just I mean, doesn't do a whole heck of a lot right now. Depends on what they have. But who knows? Oh, I wish you could see your face when I Points adding mana. Using it to adapt their grow chamber guardian, understandable. Okay. We do have to sack our fabled passage as well because we can't afford to leak. Cool interaction between Grow Chamber Guardian and the Great Henge. This means they get to Grow Chamber Guardian out a bunch. Probably attack, attack is my wager. Attack, attack, attack. We'll block the most we can. Okay. Grow Chamber Guardian. Yeah, at this point, as you can see, without a sweeper effect in our deck, we're so buried under card advantage here. 
Like, even if we play Mayhem Devil, like, claim the Firstborn's not going to do enough. Yeah, we're, we're way far out of this game. Opponent proceeded to go ballistic. <laughs> so that was a, uh, a complete and utter blowout. But we'll try one more, see if we can uh, get back up on the horse. And see if that's... I mean, I want to give everybody a reasonable smattering. And luckily, we've played against Green Red, kind of Planeswalkers, which was cool looking. Uh, Grixis Control and the, a version of the Mirrors, and a, a version of Aristocrats, anyway. That's pretty neat. I don't think White adds enough to the deck to take it out of Rakdos. So I think Oven plus Claim is a good piece of interaction. The Mayhem Devil plus the Fabled Passage. A lot of the deck leans on this Mayhem Devil. We don't have a lot of interaction in the early game. The opponent going first scares me a lot. Um, we just don't have a lot to do. And the opponent can really take advantage of that. Like, we can claim their first creature if it's decent. But if they're on a control deck or something, we just almost lose on the spot. So I'm going to mulligan. Um, this hand's okay. I think it, we can afford to probably drop a mountain and hope to find the third land source before we have to use our Fabled Passage. That's the risk with this hand, is the Fabled, a lot leans on the Fabled Passage. Couldn't place Temple of Triumph. So who knows what they're on. Let me scry one to the top. Now the question is, do we Fabled Passage? I think if we don't draw a land, we Fabled Passage here, unless they play something crazy. Uh, that does not count as something crazy. So I think we do... Well, now that we've drawn a 2-drop, that changes maybe some things. Priest of the Forgotten Gods is quite a good 2-drop. So it looks like they're trying to play Golos, kind of, because Fae of Wishes was also in the Golos deck, and these are two differently named lands. Um, it could just be a Jeskai control deck, though. Um, it's interesting to see what do we do here. Um, we could obviously Fabled Passage to play it safe. We can continue to risk things by playing a 2-drop. Um, I think, I think we probably just want to Fabled Passage here and pass the turn. Let's see what our opponent does. Okay, maybe Superheroes? Jeskai, like the old Jeskai Superheroes deck that was popular pre-Golos. I think that's going to be a lot of the decks in Standard now. It's going to be like superhero, tap-out kind of Planeswalker variants. We saw multiple Planeswalker decks already, so not a surprise there. And we absolutely got grab a Black Source here. So likely... A like, well, they can't, they have one blue source. I mean, there are definitely counter spells, like the two and a blue counter spell unless they play three. I don't know if it's holding priority because they have the Fae of Wishes or not, or they're just DCing, or they're not paying attention and eating some chips, or what they're doing here. But, yeah, I think our plan into the next turn probably is going to be to resolve it, I mean, not probably, is going to be to resolve a three drop. We just gotta figure out what three drop we want to resolve. I think the answer is Midnight Reaper, because on the level, if it hits the board, it's way better. Mayhem Devil's good, we just don't have any sack outlets at the moment, so it's not at its peak. And I'd rather save it for a turn I can go off. Like Mayhem Devil's good, like on turn four or five, when you can draw the Witch's Oven to go with it or whatever. The Midnight Reaper is good, don't get me wrong, but. Not quite as in the abstract. I think it's better on a nearly empty board. I still have no desire to crash my Cauldron Familiar into the Fae of Wishes for no value other than to draw a card. Do I think opponent would take the damage? Yeah, probably. They're going to very maybe bounce the Midnight Reaper. Stand by and watch. Okay. Don't worry, I got this. Now the question is, do we want to ingress Rampage the Fae of Wishes? Which likely is the case. So we'll grab the Fae of Wishes. Wait. No, yeah. Yeah. I, do, do I want to claim it? Because I can claim it out of my way. Attack to fairy, attack them. That may be better because that lets me hold. Yeah, I think that's going to be better.
I think that's better because it also lets me commit to my board. I really should have seen that coming. With a card that's pretty strong, the Priest is quite good. It also saves this Angrass Rampage, which is really important if they play a better Planeswalker. Because we really don't want to just get owned by a Planeswalker. And if they're playing uh, Interstellar Beacon, they're 100% playing other Planeswalkers. So we need to be very cognizant of that. Uh, I think Midnight Reaper is just going to be the play. They know about it. Again, on a on a more blank board, it's not too bad. They're going to Temple here. They have a chance to play a Sarkin. Um, Chandra, like, on their sleeves here. Um, I just wanted to see if the Chandra animation would just go through the full thing, even if you just go over it for a second. Um, hmm. This is interesting. I'll certainly swing in. I don't think the I'm gonna scare them and then hit them. Well. Okay, I think I'd scare them into taking damage. Um, I'm gonna try to play this Orzhov Enforcer and see if they're interested in countering it. They are not. I'm gonna try to light up the stage then. They held up a lot of mana. I assume they have a counter spell. Okay, then I'll play the switches up. I don't. I guess they don't have a counter spell. And we'll end the turn. That ended up working out great for us, and I have a claim the Firstborn plus Witches Oven plus Cauldron Familiar, so... This isn't bad. This isn't as bad a position as I thought we might be in by this point of the game anyway. <laughs> Which is kind of sad, but what are you going to do? That looks cool. Cool sleeves. Not much for digital sleeves. I'm not going to damage my digital cards by shuffling them. But cool if you're into it. Cool. They're obviously into the whole pet thing, the sleeve thing. Let me know what you think about that. Um, I'm not much for it, as you can tell by my very vanilla setup. I just want to play the game. Like, that's my... That's my jam, playing the game. Uh, cancel that. It's better here to just let the Midnight Reaper trigger twice. Let the Orzhov Enforcer trigger. Get a, get a critter, and then get two triggers off my Reaper. My inclination is always real fast to start going after the Witch's Oven. And I want to because I do want to get this going. And I'll happily take your, uh, your Vay of Wishes off the board, I promise. Um, I think trading in a Spirit Token is probably worth getting this Food Engine started. Go ahead and get this party started. I'm gonna go ahead and claim their their fay. See if they want to get rid of it. I'm kind of fine with them taking it, taking a like them discarding to activate the fay to stop from being claimed. And they know it'll get sacked to the Witch's Oven, so this is an understandable play here. Jeez, that was two Sarkins. Holy cats. Alright, so we'll see what they can do. Time wipe. And that'll resolve here, because we're going to play another Mayhem Devil. Castle Lock Queen, not a bad one. Uh, do we need to do this here? No, because it doesn't... Im so the reason I don't want to do the cat here is because it's not going to be able to attack here, and I want to be able to sack sack pretty quickly. I can do that in pretty rapid succession. Resolve that. Resolve that. Let me read this. Whenever a creature attacks, you are a planeswalker. Yeah, that's fine. So if they make the dragon here, they immediately kind of give up the Sarkin for a blocker, which is fine. Your end has arrived. So we're gonna use the culture familiar. Get rid of Sarkin. Here. No. 
So I am going to bring the Cauldron Familiar back right now. Uh, the opponent's tapped down to one blue. And I do want to probably end up using the Sandgrass Rampage. Uh, yeah, for sure use the Sandgrass Rampage. Get this dragon off the off the board. Then we'll attack. This leaves us with the rider at the ready, or the castle lock point activation at the ready, in addition to the witch's oven cauldron familiar ping for two plan. So we're in pretty good shape here. Um, the using the fey of wishes here is going to be rough on the opponent. Ugin the ineffable. Ugin who cannot be f. So what's good here is they're probably going to destroy a permanent. Really? Well, let's go ahead and get rid of this idiot. Uh-huh. Alright, we're just going to... I think the plan's going to be to just attempt to destroy their face. Because we don't really want to fool around with this. It still gets caught up by the Fae of Wishes, so I think our plan is to completely just try to dome them. Oh, well, that was pretty good. <laughs> hmm. That's interesting. Huh. <laughs> you can tell I'm 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 pretty pa taking pause by this. I think I've got it. We're going to sack the Cauldron Familiar to the Cavalier of Knight's ability. And we kill him. Alright. Cool. So yeah, this deck can do some pretty crazy things. If you can get the pieces together. But kind of as you can see, it's very much a put the pieces together, see how they fall kind of deck. So you really need the setup pieces. You need the payoff parts. It's got some inherent cost to it. You can see certain times your opponent's just going to completely destroy you. Because our cards are synergistic, so inherently each piece is weaker. But the opponents who are playing really just strong cards can just completely destroy you. But if we get our pieces together and we can synergize everything, we can lock the board up in a really gnarly fashion. So I think it's a pretty cool deck. I don't know if it's necessarily the best deck in standard or something you should be rushing to play. I don't even know if this version is the best version of it, but I do like it better than the black-white version we saw, for example. So let me know in the comments what you think. If you like the video, subscribe if you haven't already. If you have, thank you so much for the subscription. We really, really appreciate it. Um, otherwise, videos every Thursday. Uh, you can see it over on the side there. Uh, well, I guess it's over on the, under my head under there superliminalfilms.com superliminalfilms on twitch we do streams every sunday and then second saturday of every month we do a paper stream of board games magic something like that we've been doing a lot of retro gaming on well, a lot we've been doing retro gaming uh the sega mini came out and dan and i are both big genesis heads so we've been doing that all kinds of crap over there um podcasts on superliminalfilms.com you can find all kinds of stuff there and until next time please 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 cast more spells Ooh.